Welcome to Museum Diaries with Museum Americana founder and CEO Veronica Wallace, also known as the Duchess. Today is going to be a little bit different. There are so many updates. Um, I was watching Democracy Now! and it's astonishing what happened in the UN this last weekend, this last week. Um, in representing the United States and our policies, how we are supposed to react to after the war, during war, um, with sexual reproductive health for specifically victims of rape, which are part of the whole genocidal war machine. Apparently, the United States agrees that these women that have been horrifically brutalized and raped with HIV, with sexual abuse, with pregnancies that are unwanted, aren't really important to we Americans. I, as an American, am offended by that having survived being kidnapped as a child for two and a half years and sold in slavery. I know what sexual abuse is and the destruction. I think that we as Americans need to contact legislators, our representatives, and if you, like me, feel that women should be protected during war and after wars with their sexual health and reproductive health, please say something now, because right now our representatives at the UN have cut that particular phrase out of the war resolution. Why? We can only speculate. So that's one of my complaints. A secondary complaint, we're going back to Julian Assange, world hero for freedom of speech, for getting the truth out. And isn't that really what we Americans want now, is the truth? Has, haven't we been hiding long enough, waiting for the next person to pick up the banner, to pick up the sword and fight for our rights? How many of us have actually been involved in the protest marches? How many of us have actually gone online and even made comments on Facebook? Have you? I'm challenging you, everyone who sees this, you as an American have a voice and now is the time you have to use it because we are losing First Amendment rights, we are losing all kinds of rights. We cannot let this planet go into the toilet just so that the wealthy can get wealthier. So I'm asking all of you to do something just like we are. Gore Vidal, if you don't know who he is, it's a brilliant writer kind of a backseat politician as well because he understood our politics and he spoke loudly and exposed truths. Julian Assange was seen with this book in his hand. We picked it up at Museum Americana and been reading it. I'll just give you uh, one quote and there's so many that are worthy. Well today, this is Gore Vidal, page 104. Well today we're in a peculiar limbo, and since 9-11 things that have never happened to us before have started to happen, whoever is behind it, I assume it's Osama bin Laden and some Muslim fanatics, but whoever's behind it is not important, as you can tell. We haven't tried to find him for one thing. I think that we've all heard this before. Why did it take so long for our CIA to find Osama bin Laden? I think we knew where he was. We had Thin Thread. If you remember, we talked about Thin Thread earlier. It was a program that was discontinued weeks before 9-11. We could have found him. We could have intercepted. So now we're at a place in our American society that is critical that each American let their voice be heard. And I mean, we can't just see, say, oh, you know, we'll complain about it or let the next guy do it. It's us, you, we have to do it. Our voices, every individual has to open up their mouth and say to the representatives, say to Congress, by emails, it's not that difficult. You can go to Google and search and see who your representatives are, who's in Congress and you email them 
just write a general email. I oppose such and such, or I support such and such. We're going to lose what we have, guys. We're losing it now. We're losing our planet. So this is an emergency alert, an emergency alert of moral conscience, each of us. Look, the man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror, you matter. Your voice matters. These people are making changes in our laws and rules of living that have nothing to do with us. Now is the time we have to speak out. We can no longer be passive. All right, next thing. 83-year-old man this weekend was arrested because he was on top of a train. 83 years old. He's a Brit. They have something called Extinction Rebellion. And it's a cry for a wake-up call of the world and oil consumers, greenhouse effect creators, that we don't want this anymore because we're killing the planet. We're destroying the future for anyone that's coming after us let alone how we're going to be in the next 20 years. I mean, I can, I have asthma now, and it's just gonna escalate and escalate and escalate, and everybody is going to feel these effects. If you're not feeling it yet, you will. Look at the hurricanes, look at the changes that are going on around you in our ecology. It's, it's frightening, it's tragic, it's horrendous, it's an emergency. We have to stop it now. We have to take a stand and say, yes, it's more convenient for us to drive our big SUVs. However, we need to do more than just carpool. And it's not about buying the new Tesla electronic car because most of us can't afford them. It's about walking, using bicycles, and getting our voices out there. Okay, so. We published uh, information on how you could write and support Julian Assange, which I encourage everyone to do. Um, being inside of a jail is hell, and most of you may not have experienced that firsthand, but guess what? Before you die, you probably will. That's the new America. So get ready and get bail ready. Of course, most of us don't even have $500 in savings, so how we're going to afford the bail when we get arrested is anyone's guess something to think about. I could go on and on about all of the WikiLeaks published reports that are astonishing, that have opened up our eyes to corporate strategies and exploitation and criminal behavior by government officials. And We could go on and on about that, but look it up yourself. I don't want to bore you. Okay, here's another thing. This is a self-portrait. This is rebar, because I have a backbone of steel. I did 23 years in prison. I did seven to eight years in isolation. It made me who I am. And one of the things that I learned was, when you fight for the truth, you get punished. But it didn't stop me, and it shouldn't stop you. We've got to open up our mouths. We have to. And our guest today is my favorite girl at the moment, AOC. <laughs> Isn't she magnificent? AOC is the hope that we have right now, politically. And you need to learn more about her because she's brilliant. AOC, I call her affirmative, the AOC, to me. It's affirmative, organized, collective. So all of us can be recognized. All of us matter. Her name is Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, and she's part of the New Vanguard. If you can see in this painting, she used to be a waitress right before she took office. And you can see here are the wealthy Americans, our one percenters that we support so well and are exploited by. This is our Statue of Liberty. Do you remember her? Do you remember as a child, there was a Statue of Liberty once that represented something, that meant something? This is her now. She's carrying the one percenters, while the rest of us are trying, are trying to get shelter, are trying to have a job, are trying to get an education. These dreams that AOC is purporting about 
free college for everyone, free medical care. It's not a dream. We have the wealth to actually do it. We have the power to do it. So open up your mind. Open up your mind. All the propaganda that you've been fed, oh, it's all about economic, um, financial uh, constraints. No, it's not. We actually can do this. Imagine that. No college debt, but free education. Imagine learning when you wanted to and going to a university because you just wanted to better yourself. It breaks my heart to think that we're not there yet, but I have hope. <laughs> and AOC is one of my hopes. Um, I want to thank you for joining me. And I know that this was kind of a different type of show. But I wanted to get some words out there today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Peace out.